Alright guys, Richard Phillips back at you today with some more modern action, and today we're more or less playing a Miracles meme. So I've been working on the Miracles deck. Um, I was doing okay with it online. It was a lot of 3-2s. Uh, I got one more 4-1, but I think it was like three straight 3-2s. And it didn't really seem that like innovating the deck at all was doing much. It still has the same bad matchups, which are Control and Dredge and um, uh, Combo. Uh, as well as uh, big mana, even if you play Spreading Seas, isn't very good. Uh, and really, it didn't matter what I was putting in the deck, it was still beating all the fair decks and losing to all the unfair decks. So today, we're basically just going to have a little bit of fun. You guys were requesting miracles, so we're playing miracles. Uh, we are more or less turboing out the miracles here. We're playing a bunch of cantrips, no Riverwise Augers, playing three Terminus and two Temporal Mastery. So we're trying to take some extra turns today, guys. Um... Temporal Mastery is awful if you don't Miracle it, so we've got two Jaces here, uh, and we're basically a Monastery Mentor deck. We're playing Mentor, and then we're playing a bunch of Cantrips to power it out, and then hopefully taking another turn and winning. We're not playing any Man Lands. We need all of our lands to come in untapped. We're playing some really bad Cyclings, including Mishra's Bauble. There's no uh, positives, really, to playing Bauble, other than it's a free card that almost draws a card. Uh, draws a card at an inopportune time. So this is more or less just a meme, guys. We're just getting in there uh, with some Monastery Mentors. I'm lighting money on fire for your enjoyment. Out of the sideboard, we got some more free spells. We got some Surgical Extractions and Tormod's Crypts. Try to power that out again. We've got Fragmentize and Disenchant. I diversified them so that we can still destroy um, Chalice on one. Uh, <laughs> we've got another Vendillion Click for um, combo matchups. So we got some Counter Spells. Try to fight through it. Uh, Terminus and Timely for more aggressive decks. So, you know, uh, not really sure how this is going to go. Uh, this was more or less where my, uh, my Miracles deck uh, began, uh, like nine months, no, even more than that, almost a year ago, was with uh, Baby J, Snapcaster Mage, and a bunch of cantrips. At the time, we didn't have Opt, so I was playing Bobbles and Thought Scours. We actually have two Thought Scours in here. Like I said, this Thought Scour is more or less going to be targeting our opponent half the time, which, uh, if depending on how much you know about modern, especially right now, Thought Scour targeting your opponent is usually not really where you want to be. Uh, we also have one Search First contest, so we can play a little bit of a long game. All right, and with that, guys, we'll see you in round one while I light some money on fire for your enjoyment. Hello, everyone. We're back here with our Turbo Miracles deck, and we're just lighting some money on fire here. We won the die roll. We choose to go first. Uh, this is about as good of a hand as we can expect with this deck. We've got Interaction and Jace and a Monastery Mentor. So we'll go ahead and keep this. Our opponent mulliganed, which is also great. That means we have a chance. Go ahead and play Hollowed Fountain Tap, pass the turn. Next turn, we'll probably play a Jace. Hope our opponent uses their only removal spell on the Jace, then play a Mentor. Our opponent's playing Merfolk, probably. Nope, they're playing Lantern. Okay, this is going to be interesting. We have a lot of cantrips. This is going to be really interesting. The Terminus is an awful draw here. But um, Jace is going to be almost unbeatable for our opponent if we can uh, get it down. It's not what our opponent wants to see, so if they don't have a removal spell for it, it's not going to go well for them. Opponent mills a land off the top of their deck. See if they have an abrupt decay or something like that for this Jace. Okay, so they have a pithing needle for the Jace, that's fine. It's not great. It's fine, though. Uh, we're going to be path to exiling our own Jace at some point. Our opponent can take our Monastery Mentor, which isn't good. We're almost locked out of this game. Very close to being locked out of this game, in fact. An Ensnaring Bridge um, will more or less seal the deal for our opponent. Okay, they take a Snapcaster Mage, which leads me to believe that they have a, um, a bridge in hand. All right, they take another Mill Rock. That's fine. All right, we've got a Mishra's Bobble, which we will definitely get online after we play this Monastery Mentor.
So now uh, we will be able to draw a card in instant speed, or not at instant speed at some point, but we will be able to draw a card at some point. Um, possibly throw our opponent off a little bit. All right, so our opponent mills a thought seize. Both of the cards in our hand are garbage, so we're more or less just racing our opponent now to... Um, racing our opponent to the bridge. Okay, our opponent will take the path to exile, I guess. They just are trying to get empty-handed. Alright, and um, we are going to, at the end step, take a look at the top card of our opponent's library. Which will see what we, we need to play around. Alright, so our opponent has a bauble on top. And we get to draw two cards here. The first one, hopefully, is a miracle. No. Sad. Okay, and the second one is also not good. All right. So we'll get in for three, which isn't very much. Uh, we now have a shuffle effect with this flooded strand, so we want to hold this flooded strand on board as long as possible. We knew that our opponent had that bobble, so they're playing it. Opponent looks at the top of our library. And they're going to mill us. Okay. There's a cryptic command. Our, our opponent draws a card. Uh, we draw and entreat the angels. Uh, we would like to reveal that. In response to that, we're going to fetch with the Flooded Strand to go get another land. So that we can cast for our Angel for one more. This means that our opponent will have to get their bridge this next turn, or we're going to be able to win. No reason to attack the Jace. Alright, so our opponent's got to assemble the bridge here. See if they can get there. They'll land. And even if they uh, get the bridge, we still have a couple outs. We have two more Cryptic Commands in our deck, which can bounce the bridge. See if they got it. Nope! And they've conceded. Excellent. Alright, so we were able to get their game one against Lantern, which is really good. Um, out of the board, we can bring in some Surgical Extractions, because if we can get rid of uh, their... Um, if we can get rid of some of their pieces, uh, they can't actually win the game. So we'll get rid of Surgical. Vendillion Click seems really good. It'll give us an extra draw, um, and our opponent less of a draw. Uh, we're obviously going to bring in the Fragmentizes and the Disenchants. Those seem great in this matchup. Uh, I am also want to bring in the Gates. Uh, I could definitely see the dis Dispels also being pretty good, but I think we want to get definitely the, uh, the Negates in. We'll see how many more cards that we can cut. All right, Search for Us Kanta is nuts. Uh, that's really good. We need to keep that. Uh, the Baubles are instant speed draw. These are all instant speed draw. I think at this point we're actually pretty close to uh, exactly where we want to be. The Temporal Masteries don't really do all that much, but they're also not really dead cards. Like I could see a situation where it's really good. So I guess we'll get rid of the Entreat the Angels. We're, we're not going to be able to win. Um, it was just really lucky that it was good there, but I don't think that's how we're going to win this game. Um, so we'll cut that, and I think we'll just cut one more Negate. This will give us, I think, the best chance at um, getting under what our opponent's trying to do. All right, so we got a couple of lands here and a Disenchant, so this is really good. Uh, the Thought Scour we might be able to use in conjunction with a uh, bridge to prevent our opponent from... Or sorry, uh, we might be able to Thought Scour a bridge so that our opponent can't draw that bridge. All right, let me rephrase that. If we can Thought Scour a bridge into our opponent's graveyard and then Surgical Extract that bridge, I don't think they can win. That's what I've been trying to say. said it very poorly, though. All right. Uh, we'll play this Flooded Strand, and we'll pass the turn. 
I think we're fine with our opponent drawing the Mox Opal. Uh, we will hold this Thought Scour, I believe, until a point where we don't want our opponent to draw the top card of their library. All right. Opponent plays a Pixis. Ancient Stirrings is fine. Opponent revealed a Pixis. All right, so our opponent's playing a couple of Pixis. We will need a land eventually, so we'll just go ahead and we'll get a Hollowed Fountain. Once again, not planning on playing the... Um, Oh, excellent. That's a, uh, the, our opponent will probably prevent us from drawing this Jace. Okay. So that's good. Cool. It'll hold up this, uh, disenchant or the negate here. Not planning on using the bobble yet. All right, we don't want our opponent drawing that thought seize. So I can definitely see a situation where we will um, go ahead and Thought Scour our opponent here. And I think we'll just go ahead and do that now. Because that'll let us draw this Misty, which we do want to draw. Okay. And we don't want to draw another land, so we'll go ahead and fetch here. Serum Visions is very good. We definitely wanted to draw that. I'm going to go ahead and fetch here right now uh, so we can decide. Okay, so our opponent's getting rid of a Snapcaster Mage. We're fine with that. Fragmentize is a card that we definitely want to draw at some point. Get an Island here. And we will pass the turn, and we will probably Vendillion click at the end of our opponent's turn, and we'll counter something that is planning on destroying one of our, um, or a bridge or something like that. So I'm playing the Lantern matchup. There's like a million different things that are going on in my head, and I need to figure out what's important, what's not important. It's one of the most difficult match or card or uh, decks to play and also play against. So I'm not explaining my thoughts very well because there's like 85 things going on in my head at once. All right, Codex Shredder is fine. Yeah, basically we just need to figure out what's important and what's not important in this matchup, and there's very few things that are important in this matchup from our perspective. One of them is that we want to be able to hold up this disenchant at pretty much any time. See what our opponent's got here. All right, they're going to uh, get a bridge here. Which is fine. We can disenchant that bridge. Okay. Okay. All right, in this case, I'm going to target us uh, because our opponent has zero cards in hand. It doesn't really matter uh, what they... It doesn't matter, like, you know, if we target them. Of these cards, which one's bad, basically? And the bobble is probably worse than just drawing off the top of our deck. So, okay, we'll see if our opponent wants to fight over... Yep, so our opponent's going to get rid of this Cryptic Command. Uh, we also have Cryptic Command on top of our library. Okay, so our opponent gets rid of that Cryptic Command. And now we have a Surgical here, and we should just be able to win the game. See if our opponent wants to... Nope. Okay, so uh, right here we're going to go ahead and Disenchant the um, Ensnaring Bridge, and then Surgical the Ensnaring Bridge, and that should be the game. this one and this one and that one and we'll see what else our opponent has here our opponent has a maelstrom pulse 
and an abrupt decay, and that's really about it in terms of interaction. And we have 40 cards left in our library? Okay. And our opponent has a Thought Seize, and I don't know why that's so... It got all kinds of messed up with the... Uh, Uh, when I got resized there. All right, so we drew the Mentor. We want to bottom that. We'll top the Bobble. We'll play a land for the turn. And we'll get in at our opponent. Our opponent only has a couple of removal spells left, and this Vendillion Click will close pretty quickly. Actually, if our opponent Thought Seizes us, that's one less turn that they'll have. They just went ahead and drew their Thought Seize. That's interesting. So this is going to drop them actually down to 13... Uh, we have a couple of spells in our hand here that have to probably take the Mentor. Yeah, okay. Alright, we drew a Fragmentize, which is good. We'll just go ahead and get in there with the Vendillion Click, but it looks like we're, we're pretty much in the clear here. Uh, our opponent would have to draw very, very well, and uh, we're not even close to being milled out yet. So our opponent's dead in uh, two turns. Unless they draw something really good here. Yeah, we're not going to fight over that. Okay, we're not going to fight over that either. Not going to fight over that either. That's fine. Um, am I missing something? Okay, that's fine. I really don't think I'm missing something here. I'm just going to flash in the Snapcaster Mage and then put our opponent on a quick clock here. I mean, I guess we might as well just surgical something out of their deck. Because we don't want them drawing that engineered explosives. Um, okay. I don't know which of these cards matters more. Uh, I guess we'll get Ancient Stirrings. Because, I don't know. Alright. Ancient Stirrings gone. Ancient Stirrings gone. That's fine. Our opponent has a Lantern on top of their deck. That's fine. We have a Negate for anything that they draw uh, other than Abrupt Decay, so they need to find exactly Abrupt Decay, but even that only buys them another couple of turns. All right, and they concede. Excellent. All right, so the meme is up 1-0. Uh, we just beat down real hard on uh, Lantern Control, which just won the Pro Tour, so that means that our deck's better than any deck on the Pro Tour. Pretty sure that's how that works by uh, transit property. All right, guys, back for round two here. We won the dice roll again, which is always the key to success. Um, we got two cantrips. I think we just keep this. I don't really know. Let's get first time running this deck. Uh, our opponent mulligan to six again, which is a good way. Mulligan to five, another good way to win the game. We definitely want lands and interaction, so we'll shock this in, and we will try to draw four lands. All right, that's a land. That's good. Um, do we want lands three and an opt? Probably, right? So we'll um, top the opt, top the island, and then next turn we can Serum Visions and opt. All right, our opponent's playing Burn. I believe we left the land on top, which is good. That means we'll draw it here. Good. Okay. All right, so basically here we need to figure out whether or not we plan on trying to find interaction for this Goblin Guide. Or if we plan on just flashing in a Snapcaster Mage. I could see both of those plays being correct, honestly. 
I think that the best one is to serum visions here and try to hit something that matters. Um, Vendelia Click's actually a pretty good clock. Both of these cards are actually pretty good clocks. Um, we'll go ahead and top a couple things here. Um, and then we'll use the op to just draw the top one. Okay, cool. There's probably some um, sense in possibly using the uh, the Mishra's Bobble here, to uh, or just playing it at least, so that we could draw another card. Okay, we've been Boros Charm down to 12, which means we're at 10, which isn't great. All right. So here, I think we definitely want to play out the Bobble now. We're going to look at the top card of our library and see if we want to draw it. Uh, it's a Monastery Mentor. Okay, so that's pretty good. So I think that means that at this point, what we're going to do is just play the Island. And then we'll pass the turn. Uh, we are going to, oh no, okay, what we should do is this, so we'll play Snapcaster Mage, we will target the Serum Visions, we want to draw the um, Monastery Mentor on top of our library, so we'll do that, and then we want to scry to a land on top, so we're going to bomb both of those cards, okay, that's fine. Uh, we will trade this Goblin Guide for the Snapcaster Mage. Our opponent drew a land, which I think is good. All right, they have a Searing Blaze, so that puts us down to five, which isn't great. All right, we drew another Mentor, which is not great either. I don't think we're in a position here where we can actually use this Mentor very well. I think we're on the uh, Snapcaster plan again for uh, Serum Visions. Alright. Uh, we're going to top the Temporal Trespass and hope to survive this turn, I think is our plan. We could very realistically be dead here. Okay. So one of the last cards in our opponent's hand is a burn spell, which means we'll lose. And that's just unfortunate that we didn't draw any of our paths. See if we're dead here. Yeah, we are. Make our opponent show it to us. Yep, okay, that'll kill us. Alright, very unfortunate. Okay, so cards that are good in this matchup, Dispel's pretty good in this matchup, so we'll bring in a couple of Dispels. Uh, Timely's really good. Entreat is very slow, and so are Temporal Masteries. Uh, Terminus is also usually not where you want to be, so I like going down usually one Terminus against Burn because a lot of the time that we just want to be like removing their spells one for one. So we'll bring in a negate here. And I think that looks pretty good like that. The reason why we don't want the temporal trespass is because um, unless we can exactly miracle it, it's a dead card, and we can't really afford to have dead cards in this matchup. It's not a matchup where we can ever really get to seven mana. And also we can't expect our Jaces to survive, our baby Jaces. I played the uh, Flood Strand here so we can get basic uh, planes and path a one mana play here from our opponent, a one mana creature. Okay. And I think we are just going to go ahead and do that. This gives us significantly more uh, live draws off the top where we can play as Kanta and Baby Jace as well as Cantrip into something. 
Okay, Field of Ruins, not good. We'll go ahead and play an Island to Pass here. Not looking good for the home team here. See what our opponent plays. See how much they want to play around the Mana Leak. Okay, so nothing really, which is good. Uh, we are planning on using this Vendillion Click and not the Monastery Mentor. I don't want to just run the Monastery Mentor into two mana. Oh, and also, you know, our opponent has the Rift Bolt, so. They targeted us with the Rift Bolt, which seems better than targeting themselves. Sure, Lava Spike us, that's fine. Alright, and at the end of the turn, I'm going to go ahead and use this Vendillion Click. I'll target our opponent, and I think I'm just going to take whatever the biggest spell they have is. I don't think that clicking ourselves is really going to do much here. Although clicking them is also not going to do all that much, but it's at least a clock. Alright, so they have uh, Searing Blaze... Yeah, let's get rid of the Searing Blaze, I guess, because the Searing Blaze is definitely going to deal it um, some damage next turn. And... Yeah, the Searing Blaze is definitely going to deal it damage. And also us damage. So I think I like taking that. So they have Boros Charm, uh, Helix. Uh, they have a land. They also drew a card off of that. Okay, casting the Boros Charm now. So if we draw Timely off the top, that's very good for us. No, okay, we drew Misty. Uh, Misty is okay because that means that we actually can hold up the Cryptic Command, which is kind of cool. So we'll get in there with the Vendillion Click. Um... I think that we just want to uh, we just want to cryptic this now. Uh, this will allow our opponent to still cast one more spell, but we're going to take two damage off of this Goblin Guide, and we want to be able to leverage our mana this turn because our opponent is just going to pass otherwise, and we want to be able to use our mana this turn. All right, drawing Terminus is not good, which is one of the reasons why we try to cut some here is because you can see that you know we're we're losing this game, and yet we have a Terminus here in our hand. Or are we just Miracle Determinus with no open mana? So next turn, I think we're on a um, attack our opponent with Vendillion Click plan. And we're going to try to take our opponent off of white mana. And then play a Monastery Mentor. Then next turn we can try to take them off of green mana. See if they want to cast a helix here. Okay. I think we want the other island because that way we can um, still get Snapcaster Path off of here. Okay, so our opponent actually doesn't have another mana, which is interesting. They don't have any more basic lands in their deck. So we're going to play this Mentor and Pass. If our opponent wants to helix the Mentor, that just means that the Mentor gained us three life. So I'm cool with that. Okay. Our opponent will put us down to five. Next turn, once again, the tentative plan is to Field of Ruin them off of the green mana. Nope, okay, they drew Wooded Foothills, which is very bad for us. I believe they can kill us with the last two cards in their hand.
Yep, that'll drop us to two. Oh no, and they played an Eidolon. Interesting, okay. Alright, so we definitely want to get them off of this of the white source. We want to get our own white source. And then I believe we want to we want to attack our opponent. And the Vendillion click puts them on a faster clock. So we need them to brick on non-white spells now for a couple of turns. Okay. Or on white spells. Okay, so they, they played the land, passed the turn. They're at eight. All right, we drew another island. Uh, we'll play the hollowed fountain tapped. And we'll get in with the click. If our opponent bricks one more time, they can't kill us. So they got a brick here. Brick. Ah, lava spike's not a brick. Okay. Um, yeah, that kills us. All right. Darn, real close. Next card, Misty. Okay, so we weren't getting there anyway. All right, real close there. The meme is at one and one. We still have the ability to cash this league for sure. And we don't have really any interaction with our opponent. Our deck just can trips a lot. So, as you saw, it was really good against Lantern. It's good against decks that are trying to uh, control what we draw. Uh, it would also be good against a mid-range strategy. But in that case there, when we're just trying to uh, kill our opponent really quick, our deck doesn't really do anything in particular. All right, this hand opts for a second land, so we'll keep it. It's very reliant on this opt, so if our opponent thought seizes us, it's not might not be great for us. All right, this is a good start for us. Excellent. All right, um, we're just going to shock in this hollowed fountain and then possibly use the opt or the uh, path to exile depending on what our opponent plays. If our opponent plays like a uh, two-mana elf or something like that, like a, uh, if they're on like collected company type deck, the one with the infinite combo, we'll get rid of the devoted druid. Oh, okay, so our opponent's playing Obzon of some sort. This is cool. If our opponent plays a Bob, we'll path it. If our opponent thought seizes, we will probably cast the opt. Okay. We'll go ahead and opt here. We want land still. Uh, we want high impact spells. Uh, that's a land, so we'll keep that. That's fine. Alright, third land's not as exciting as the others. I'm going to play the Flooded Strand here and plan on fetching um, here because we might have scries later that we don't want to mess up, so I'd rather get rid of, get our, uh, use our fetches now. If our opponent plays Liliana, I'm not sure what we'll pitch. Oh, okay, Lingering Souls, that's fine. Alright, so we drew a Serum Visions. Uh, does that change at all what we want to do? I don't think it does. This might be a little bit of an aggressive line, and it doesn't do very well if our opponent has... Um, targeted removal, but I think I like getting out this Monastery Mentor now and making our opponent answer it, because we'll at least be able to get some value off of it with this bobble, and we'll also be able to see what our opponent, or what we're uh, drawing during our turn, and we can opt away from it if we want to. Let's 
So we don't want to um, use it now because if our opponent casts Thought Seize, we want to uh, have one less card for them to see of ours. This line's very good if our opponent has Liliana. Okay, they have a Tarmogoyf. That's fine. Oh, they have another Tarmogoyf? Oh, yes. All right, so this is going to be a massacre. Um, very excited for this. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at what our opponent has on top of their library. All right, they have an Abrupt Decay. All right, so we got to get as much value as we can off of this Monastery Mentor now. All right, so we drew an island, and we drew another Monastery Mentor. Okay. Uh, I think I'm, once again, I just want to leverage this current um, Monastery Mentor as much as possible this turn, and then next turn, after they Abrupt Decay, our um, Monastery Mentor, we can play another Monastery Mentor and then hopefully continue to accrue value. We want to Serum Visions first, just to see what we uh, could possibly draw here. Alright, um, another path and another vision seem good. So we'll top that, top this. Um, let's go ahead and path the first goif. We'll always yield to the mentor, always yield, always yield. Oh, and our opponent's not going to be able to draw that Decay now because we, uh, assume, assuming they choose a basic land. Okay, so they did choose a basic land. Get rid of the other one, too. And we'll get in there with our two guys who can attack for nine damage this turn. And we'll see if our opponent can answer this. Okay. Putting up some uh, some spirit blockers. And another goif. Alright. So we will begin this time by... Hmm. Okay. So let's think about the math here. Uh, if our opponent has removals, so we'll play as if our opponent has removal spells. Because what we could do is we could just Snapcaster, we could path, or Serum Visions, draw the path, path this, Snapcaster, path something. Uh, but that line is very loose to uh, removal spells here. So we'll go ahead and use this Serum Visions. bottom of the terminus because that's probably not what we want. We will keep the search for his Kanta on the top because that is a uh, nice piece of interaction here. Go ahead and stack all these triggers in really any order. Don't matter. And we'll force our opponent to do a little bit of chump blocking here. And we still have double Snapcaster Mage in hand. Yep, okay, so our opponent had Fatal Push. It's one of the reasons why... Okay, they had another Fatal Push. They Fatal Push both Monastery Mentors. But they still have to deal with a bunch of Monks. And then next turn we'll be able to um, Snapcaster Path, Snapcaster... Oh, wait, we drew, we left a Search First Kanta on top, so we'll be able to cast two non-creature spells next turn. Pump these monks by two. Not sure why our opponent only chumped with a couple of the spirits there. Okay, opponent has a Tireless Tracker, that's fine.
I think my plan here is to not show our opponent. Okay, yeah, our opponent just concedes. Yeah. I was going to say, I was going to try to not show our opponent as much as possible about our hand or about our deck. Okay. So, post board. This matchup is already very much um, how we want it. Like, as you saw there, we just kind of wrecked our opponent. I could see some number of negates coming in and possibly a Vendillion click. So maybe two negates and a Vendillion click, but I'm not really sure if those are better than any cards that we have in our deck. Uh, I think we're still the aggressor, maybe, so I'm going to cut a Terminus. Um, I think possibly we don't want the Thought Scours. They're easily our worst cantrips, and our opponent's going to be Thought Seizing us, so we just want higher impact spells, which is why I'm bringing in the... Uh, the Vendillion click. The negates are almost exclusively for the Lilianas. It just so happens with this build, both Lilianas are really good. A Liliana the Veil can make us sacrifice a Mentor if we don't have backup for it. And uh, Liliana uh, the Last Hope can get rid of our Monk tokens. So I think we're going to board like that. I'm not sure if that's exactly correct. But I just want to increase our high impact spells. Huh, all right, let's take a look at this hand. All right, so we have double bobble, which means that we could literally have anything in our hand. Our opponent mulligan to six. Huh. I don't know if we should keep this or not. You can let me know in the comments if you'd keep this or not. I think that we are going to keep this. If our opponent wants to play... Uh, turn one Inquisition or something like that and take our Snapcaster Mage. We're okay with that. Opponent's down to five. Yeah, I think generally just us drawing lands and spells is really good in this matchup. So I think we're good with that. All right, the first thing we're going to want to do, especially trunk another bobble, is we're going to cast the bobble and look at the top card of our library because that'll decide whether or not we want to fetch. The top card of our library is Temporal Mastery, which means that we are going to want to fetch. But we don't want to tell our opponent um, that. Well, actually, I guess we do. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and get a tap land here because we're going to be drawing at the beginning of our opponent's next turn. Uh, we are going to cast another bobble so we can look at the top of our or our opponent's library at some point. I don't see us getting value off of a bunch of these baubles, especially in this matchup. So we drew a land, which isn't good. All right, our opponent has a Grim Flayer. Things could be definitely worse. We'll take a look at what our opponent's planning on drawing so we can play around it. All right, our opponent has a Nihil Spell Bomb. We could certainly play around that. All right, so we drew a Mentor and a Flooded Strand. Interesting. Okay, so... I think we want to play a Misty here and just reduce our chances of drawing bad cards. All right, we have an interesting line here. We know our opponent drew a Nihil Spell Bomb this turn, uh, so that means that our Snapcaster Mage is going to be getting progressively worse. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and use the Snapcaster Mage right now. If our opponent wants to use a removal spell on it so that we we can't trade with the Grim Flayer, that's fine with us, but we know that they have Nihil Spell Bomb. So we can't really foresee ourselves getting any sort of value off of this Snapcaster Mage. Okay. And that's good. Our opponent actually did use a removal spell on it, which means that they will be able to get in with the Grim Flayer and then play a Nihil Spell Bomb, but that is a uh, Fatal Push that is not going to be used on our Monastery Mentor. All 
All right, so our opponent is keeping, it looks like, one card on top, and they put a Grim Flare and an Inquisition on the bottom. All right, and there's their Nile Spellbomb. Oh, man, we are flooding out so hard here. All right. Um, let's go ahead and play this Island. We'll play this Monastery Mentor. And we'll play Mishra's Bauble. Once again, we don't want to crack this bobble until our opponent's turn because... Oh, sorry, our opponent kept a land on top. That's interesting. We don't want to crack this bobble until um, sometime in our opponent's turn because of the fact that they still have Thought Seizes in their hand. Okay, so they're going to collect your Brutality. Um, they're just giving this minus two. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we will take a look at our opponent's... The top of our opponent's library... Twilight Mire. Okay, that's a fourth land. I guess we should have waited until after their Grim Flare. Yeah, we definitely should have waited until after their Grim Flare. Oh, it's just free information. It's not, not like, you know, it's not like we're going to win or lose the game because we decided to bobble now. But man, we only play 22 lands in this deck. We've seen 14 cards out of our library and like three, seven. We've seen like Eight lands, which is absurd. More lands. Okay, we drew a Serum Visions this time. Alright, we'll go ahead and use our Serum Visions. We need to draw like a path here. Oh man, Terminus and Snapcaster Mage. Okay, so we will top that and top the Terminus. And we will just go and play a land. Like, you know, nothing happened here. Get in there with a monk. Hope our opponent plays the board here and or uses their Nile Spellbomb. Okay, great. All right, so our opponent's going to use their Nile Spellbomb. I think they think that they're buried here, but in reality they're doing totally fine. Because once again, uh, seven, we've seen 17 cards and four, we've seen about half of our lands in the deck. Yeah, nice duress, buddy. Play creature. Oh. Yeah, we want to reveal the terminus. All right, so as of right now, we know that there is a um, Snapcaster Mage on top of our deck. If our opponent plays a creature, we will probably draw the Snapcaster Mage. If they don't, a random draw is probably better than a Snapcaster Mage. Okay, so it doesn't look like our opponent plays anything, which means that we'll use this Field of Ruin at the end of the turn. Might as well go after their White Source. They're more unlikely to have um, a Plains. They might just be playing the uh, the Reed Duke junk, or uh, Abzan list. Yeah, okay, cool. And we drew another one. That's not great. We'll go ahead and use this Field of Ruin here, or play this Field of Ruin here. And we're just playing off the top of our library, and it looks like our opponent has two removal spells in hand. That would be my guess, based on the way that they played this so far. Uh, we'll go ahead and go after their land. This might be wrong because our opponent has uh, a couple of man lands in their deck, but I think um, at this point thinning is like real in this deck because right now we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight lands left. So we have eight in 38, which isn't very many. All right, we drew a Snapcaster Mage, which 
uh, actually will be live uh, next turn for Snapcaster Terminus, which is really interesting. We'll continue to fetch uh, cards out of our library. It's very, very rare that fetching matter or doesn't matter, or fetching matters in terms of statistical probability, but we're actually getting to the point that it will, which is kind of nuts. Uh, we're also getting low on fetchable lands. We only have like three of them left. Or four of them, I guess. Five of them. All right, we drew a path to exile, which is excellent. Go ahead and play out another flooded strand. This also, uh, if we draw as Kanta, this helps, or Baby Jace. Okay, Nile Spell Bomb's fine. See if our opponent just wants to use the Nile Spell Bomb. Nope. Alright, we'll go ahead and get the Hollowed Fountain out of our library, too. Our life total doesn't really matter too much here. Wow, this is just absurd. Okay, we'll play the Misty Rainforest. Okay, this is good for us. You know what would be a really good draw off the top here? Would be a... Uh, um, uh, entreat the Angels. Alright, let's see what our opponent does here. Our opponent is going to cast a Collective Brutality to drain us and to look at our hand. Okay. There's no reason to fetch with this Misty now. We are getting a little bit close to being dead here. Alright, drawing Cryptic Command is very good. We'll play the Island. This will give us the option to um, use the Snapcaster Mage and the Cryptic Commands is good. Best draw here would probably be Search for Ascanta. Alright. Drew a Mishra's Bobble. Um, yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and cast it. Uh, we can actually target ourselves and then use our Misty Rainforest to fetch it away if we don't like the card. I'm keeping one land in hand in case our opponent plays a Liliana. We'll just discard the Flooded Strand. Ha, Lingering Souls. That's a good one. All right, so we're going to go ahead and um, uh, counter that and uh, draw a card. Man. Oh boy, and we're out of fetchable lands here too. So if I would have played the Flooded Strand here, we could have uh, Snapcaster Mage, Cryptic Command, Counter the Lingering Souls, Bounce the Snapcaster Mage. But because I didn't do that like a dummy, we actually don't have any... Um, we don't have any targets on this Misty Rainforest. This Misty Rainforest is not searching for any lands in our deck. Man, that's, that's real unfortunate. Alright, so we'll look at ourselves, see what the top card of our library is. It is a negate. Uh, we don't want to draw a negate, so we're actually just going to shuffle for no value here. Okay. Alright, we drew a path. And a negate. Alright. Well, this is not great for us. Alright, so what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to use the Snapcaster Mage. We're going to get this Cryptic Command.
uh, we are going to return one of these spirits to the owner's hand and draw a card. Alright, cool. We drew an opt. Opponent can get in there with one spirit. That's fine. Okay. I didn't want to bounce the Snapcaster Mage there because there's a very good chance that our opponent would have just um, killed the Snapcaster Mage in response, which wouldn't have been good. I could have tapped their team and then draw... Okay. So our opponent's Fatal pushing the Snapcaster Mage. We're fine with that, uh, but we would like to path this Goyf. Uh, we will also opt here. Alright, we definitely want to draw Serum Visions. That seems really good. Uh, temporal Mastery. Yeah, we'll go ahead and reveal it, and we'll take another turn here. Alright, and we will Serum Visions. Uh, Terminus. That's uh, it's actually not a bad draw. We definitely want to top, top that, top that, and then we're actually just going to go ahead and full cost cast this terminus just to get rid of the one spirit. Okay, and then we get to take our next turn. And draw the Serum Visions. And then... Top... Uh, sorry. Um, top... Top. Play the Jace. And I believe we do have to fight over this Jace, because if our opponent draws a white land, they'll be able to... Um, activate the Shambling Vent, and we have to chump block it. So if our opponent plays a Fatal Push or something here, we do have to block the Jace. Or, uh... Okay, Grim Flare. That's fine. Okay, Maelstrom Pulse is not fine, so we'll negate that. Oh man, we actually might turn the corner here, as nuts as this is. Okay, so we're good with that. We're going to draw with Jace. Uh, we're going to discard this Flooded Strand. Then we're going to cast the Mentor. Opt with the Mentor, or opt with Mentor on the battlefield, get a trigger. Uh, Snapcaster Mage on top. Um, use this target the Path to Exile. Path the Grim Flare. And then leave Snapcaster Mage up to Snapcaster Opt or Snapcaster Path or Snapcaster Negate. Alright. Still not like in an amazing spot, but I think we've kind of turned the corner here. I don't know what our opponent could have in their hand. Might be like Damnation or something. Alright, so to keep in something to keep in mind, our opponent can definitely off of the uh, Verdant Catacombs get white mana. All right, Abrupt Decay. Can we interact with Abrupt Decay at all? Um, not really. So, no. Okay, Maelstrom Pulse on the Monk. Do we want to interact with that?
Um, so we could take an aggressive line here of Snapcaster Mage negating that, which would give us the monks in play. But then our opponent will be able to fire up the Shambling Vent, so I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and let that happen. That might have been a loose play, um, but it seemed like it was actually best there at the time. All right, so we'll just plus the Jace here. I think if we continue to tread water like this, our opponent has no cards in hand, so uh, I think they're going to be relatively enticed here to get the Shambling Vent going. And we'll be able to... Um, Snapcaster Path it. Oh, our opponent doesn't have any more white or black sword. Oh, wow. Okay, so I played that assuming our opponent had another white land in their deck, and it looks like they didn't. So that's interesting. All right, we're going to go ahead and cast the Snapcaster Mage because our opponent has Inquisition. And I'm going to target Opt. And then we can let the Inquisition resolve because they can't take Cryptic Command with that. Oh yeah, here's the Temple Garden. That's interesting. And there's the Godless Shrine. Wow. Okay, so our opponent actually didn't have... Yeah. I guess if I would have looked a little bit more closely at our opponent's graveyard, I would have found that out. Huh. Very interesting. Alright, we're going to put Opt on top. That's fine. Opt is cool. We'll opt again. Uh, we'll put Jace on top. It seems fine. Um, that'll let us use this Jace and then another, uh, the other Jace uh, at the same, or like you know, very quickly thereafter. So we can um, plus this Jace for now on nothing. Get in with the Snapcaster Mage. So let us uh, be able to stop two cards on our opponent's turn. All right, so during our opponent's draw step, we are going to go ahead and cast the Vendillion Click, and we'll target them, and we have Cryptic Command back up. So even if they drew a um, piece of interaction here, we'll be able to counter it. Let's see what card they drew. We don't want to fire off this Cryptic Command if we don't have to, because the one card that can definitely kill us would be um, uh, the card that could kill us would be uh, Collective Brutality. Alright, so this is interesting here. Uh, we have choice here of what we want to do. We can let that resolve. We can Cryptic Command, bounce the Snapcaster Mage, draw a card which would let us Cryptic Command in the later turn and draw us an extra card. Yeah, I like that, I think. Let's go ahead and Cryptic Command, uh, return target permanent to its owner's hand and draw a card. So we'll return that to our hand and draw a card. Okay. And our opponent doesn't have any cards in hand. No cards, okay. Uh, yes, we'd like to reveal uh, Temporal Mastery. Let's go ahead and cast it. And then we will play a Mentor. And then we'll minus this on a Serum Visions. We will cast the Serum Visions. I believe our opponent's dead here. I think the, the math works out where they're they're just dead. Alright, search for Ascanta. Um, bottom another mentor. This actually doesn't matter too much. Um, then we're going to draw and discard with this Jace here. Uh, we'll just discard the Cryptic Command. That's fine. Uh, we'll keep this Jace. We will minus on uh, another Serum Visions. Alright. 
We're just putting cards on top here. Prowessing everything up. And then we'll swing next turn for the win. Put that on the bottom. Um, put path on the bottom too, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Um, and then we might as well just go ahead and play the search first Conta now. Because that means that next turn we'll be able to draw a spell off of the search first Conta. And we'll get in with the Vendillion click, and then we'll take another turn. And we win the match. Excellent. Alright, so the meme is 2-1. and one. We're getting there. We are getting there. Alright, guys, and we're back for round four. Four, we won the dice roll again, like the skilled magician we are. This is a wonderful hand, which we will keep. Um, we have some. We have a question here whether or not we want to shock turn one. I think we do, just because it's very important that we have white for turn... Actually, it's less important because we have search first contact for turn two, so I think we want to minimize the amount of damage we take. I don't know, it's kind of close there. Especially drawing paths off the top like that makes me wish that we did draw... We did shock ourselves. But we definitely wanted to set up some lands. Oh, sweet. All right, our opponent looks like they're playing some sort of fair strategy, which is great. Um, that's exactly what we were hoping for. We need a white source off of this search for us content next turn. This is probably Jund. All right, Jund it is. Uh, we have to dodge a Thought Seize here and draw a White Source. I think we can do that. Okay, Bitter Blossom. That's a little hard for us to beat, but we can definitely beat it, I think. Uh, yes, we want to put Snapcaster. No, crap. Okay, we missed on a White Source, which is unfortunate. All right, we definitely want to scry that to the top and draw it. Alright, we're always going to yield to this um, Bitter Blossom. See what our opponent plays here. Okay, this is good for us. No Liliana is good for us. Okay, a Grim Flare. Alright. So if we draw, um, if we draw a land here. This is very good. I don't want to crack this flooded strand because this will give us uh, more looks at um, drawing a land off of the search for us Kanta. Uh, yes, I'd like to put Thought Scour in our graveyard. All right, we drew and treat the angels. No, I don't want to reveal that. Huh. I think it's more important that we hit our lands here. So, okay, cool. So we opted into a land there. Um, we're going to go ahead and get a basic planes right now. And I guess we'll wait until our opponent's upkeep. There's no reason to do it now. But we'll go ahead and we'll get the Grim Flare off the table. So unfortunately, because our lands have not cooperated, we're not in an amazing position here. Uh, but at the same time, we're not in a terrible position. If we draw a land off the top, we'll actually be able to cast the... Uh, oh, crap. That's not good for us. Okay. It's a good draw for our opponent. They still have four cards in hand.
We'll go ahead and get blue white here. Be nice to draw one mana cantrip here. All right, and we did it. Good. Okay, so we'll go these three here for the mentor. Play a Mishra's Bobble. And then we'll pass the turn. Because we can trigger the... Um, oh, okay. So our opponent's going to bolt in response. Which is a good play by them. I think we still are going to want to go ahead and opt here. Uh, that'll get us a little bit more value off of this opt. Is our opponent going to bolt in response again? No. Okay. Mishra's bobble. All right, we're going to put the next bobble on the bottom because we don't need it. All right, and we'll pass the turn here. Uh, we are going to use the bobble on ourself and figure out whether or not we want to draw that card like we did the last time. Looks like our opponent might get in there with the Raging Ravine this time. Yep, okay. Uh, I think we're, we're just going to go ahead and chump the Raging Ravine with one of these monks here because uh, we're going to have to wipe the board at some point. Our monks aren't really going to be able to get through these fairies, I don't believe, on average. And especially because we have one in hand. Um, Looks like it might be set up pretty nicely here. All right. Opponent ends the turn. We'll take a look at the top card of our library. It is a Temporal Mastery. Um, yeah, I actually like the Temporal Mastery because that'll allow us to get rid of the Raging Ravine as well as... Um, get in there with the monk and then take another turn so okay uh yes would like to reveal that okay cast the temporal mastery get the monk up all right and we drew serum visions too this is good so we'll go ahead and get the island, then we will uh, destroy this Raging Ravine. Get another island. Our opponent doesn't have any more basics, which is also really good. All right, we're going to bottom that, and I think also we want to bottom the Vin dillion click because that's not doing all that much uh, we probably should have gotten a second planes i wasn't actually thinking about this but next turn we can very realistically just entreat the angels for two which is kind of cool our opponent fatal pushes the monk we're cool with that actually we're very happy with that all right and we drew a hollowed fountain so we'll go ahead and play the hollowed fountain untapped and we will just make two angels. Oh, and our opponent drew a Raging Ravine, which is unfortunate for us. Alright, they abrupt decay one of our angels. And they play a goblin guide, okay. Uh, we want to block the goblin because that actually will prevent the goblin rabble master from getting too big. All right. I think here we're going to get in with the, um, the angel and then board wipe with the terminus. I suppose we can wait one more turn. We're going to wait one more turn.
Because if we draw a Snapcaster Mage with this exact line, uh, this puts us in a really good spot. See if our opponent... Okay, our opponent plays a Liliana of the Veil. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, we are going to... Tap all creatures our opponent controls and draw a card now. Okay. Uh, then we're going to opt Field of Ruin. Huh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Might as well bottom the Field of Ruin. Okay, we drew a Jace. Um, Jace is going to be too slow, so we'll discard the Jace. Okay. And this is going to allow us to kill the Liliana and then Terminus but we still are on a two-turn clock to our opponent's Raging Ravine. Okay. So we'll attack the Liliana. And then we'll Terminus. And we'll pass the turn. We're going to take four off the Raging Ravine, go down to three. So we're going to have to hit with this Mentor. Or so we're going to have to hit on this draw step into something good. Okay, our opponent drawing a land is good. We definitely couldn't beat anything on top of the, uh, the Raging Ravine and the, the Rogue. You still might not be able to, to be perfectly honest. Best draw would probably be Snapcaster Mage. Okay. We drew a Monastery Mentor, which is... Or, sorry, we drew a Thought Scour, which is at least some action here. Go ahead and play the, uh, the Mentor. Um... I guess we want to Thought Scour our opponent. man. Alright, and we drew a land, which is not good. Yeah, we need a snapcaster off the top. And that's game. Okay. So our opponent had a good start there. We were almost able to claw back into it, but not quite. All right. So we know our opponent has Liliana the Veil. They also have some Maelstrom Pulses. I think we'll probably do the same thing that we did last time, which is that we're going to cut a couple of Indillion clicks, or add a couple of Negates, cut a couple of Indillion clicks. And um, I guess we have one more card that we have to cut here. Um, I think because our opponent's playing Rabble Master as well as Bitter Blossom and stuff like that, it's important that we keep our Terminus. I could also see the argument to bringing in maybe a Disenchant or something like that because our opponent has Bitter Blossom. So maybe I'd buy that. Maybe just one Disenchant. I know it's very narrow, but I think that that card's good enough in this matchup where we need to be able to answer it almost immediately. So maybe we'll cut the Vendillion click because our opponent's playing um, a bunch of 1-1s one there. And we'll cut a Temporal Mastery. Uh... It wasn't even great there, and I don't think that in general the card's going to be super good in this matchup. And of course we drew our Disenchant in our opening hand, but other than the Disenchant, this hand's actually exactly what we'd want out of a hand, so we'll keep it. Uh, if we can dodge turn one rem or turn one uh, Thoughtseize, this is an excellent hand. See if we can 
dodge it. Not with a black leaf cliffs opener. Nope. Okay. We're not really sure what we want to opt for yet, so we're just going to play a tap hollowed fountain. Man, that's unfortunate. The search for his comps is so good. I think our opponent just... Oh, our opponent took the disenchant. Wow. Okay. Well, we will absolutely 100% take this opportunity to get down the uh, search for us, Kanta. I don't quite know what... Man, I was saying that the disenchant was a liability in our opening hand. So they must have exactly... Yeah, they have Bitter Blossom here? Okay. Well, we can snap disenchant that at some point. Uh, put Hollowed Fountain in the graveyard. Um, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. We honestly just want to flip this search for us, Kanta, as quick as possible. We don't want our opponent to be able to uh, abrupt decay it or something like that. Next turn, we can snap Disenchant the Bitter Blossom. Uh, looks like they have it here. That's unfortunate. Oh, no, they have a Grim Flare. Okay. So we'll go ahead and opt and path at the end of this turn here. Um, actually, you know what? I think we just want to Field of Ruin the Raging Ravine and opt here. Or, sorry, path. Path. Sorry. Uh, because this will now let us flip the search for Ascanta. So we can absolutely snapcast or disenchant the Bitter Blossom. We'll probably bin anything here. Yeah, Vendillion Click especially, because they have the Fairy Rogue already. Okay, so we drew a Monastery Mentor, which is a good draw, but I still think that here we need to go ahead and get the Bitter Blossom off, because the Bitter Blossom is going to bury us real quick. So our opponent just got a Fairy Rogue off of that uh, Bitter Blossom, which is good for us. Uh, they have another Bitter Blossom. Okay. And they have a Goyf. Okay. All right. Cryptic Command. I think we still need to play to the board here, but I don't think think that we need to rush yeah I think I like this we don't need to rush on the um, the the uh, path for that goif we can take six damage here I'm fine with that Uh, we will only get punished by taking this line if our opponent has scavenging ooze, which I guess I didn't really consider. Opponent terminates the... Okay. So we will opt first. There's already all these types in the graveyard. We just want to get a monk out of this. Uh, we want lands now. That's a land, so we'll keep that. And we can have six now. Alright. Opponent plays a, or gets a bob, which is not great for us. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, path the bob, trigger prowess. Um, snap path on the goif.
And then I think we do want to play the land. The downside to playing the land here is that it's really poor if our opponent has uh, Liliana of the Veil. Fairy Rogue's fine. Alright. Take one. Uh, reveal Terminus. No, you know what? I don't think we do want to reveal Terminus. I think we want to try to leverage our advantage here as much as we can. Yeah, I think I'm I'm not like super thrilled with our position on board here, but I think I'm okay with it. Bitter Blossom is very good for our opponent though. Very, very good. Alright, we will definitely cryptic command that. Alright, and we drew a Snapcaster Mage, which is good. I think I'm very willing here to go ahead and uh, get the Hollowed Fountain. Okay, we drew a Serum Visions, which is very good too. So let us set up some draws and get through past the Fairy Rogue. If our opponent wants to use a removal spell on the Monk, we're fine with that. Oh boy, all right. Um... Huh. Well, and Treat's real awkward here, because right now we can't even cast it for... Well, we could cast it for one next turn. So maybe we want to do that. Maybe we want to put the opt on top and then the land, and then we could still do it for one if we snapcast or path something here. Okay, our opponent's abrupt decaying the monk. Yeah, we're cool with that. That's fine. Man, we are getting buried by this bitter blossom. Holy crap. scavenging news. Well, that's not very good. Alright, we'll go ahead and Snapcaster Mage. Target the path. I think our opponent's going to try to exile this path, and it's not going to work out for them. I'm not sure. Okay, so they're going after the Vendillion click. In response, we'll just go ahead and path the Scavenging Ooze now. Okay, our opponent eats some creatures out of our graveyard. We're going to opt. Oh 
would love to draw that land that we put on top of our library. Try to eat a removal spell here because our opponent can't attack through the angel. Get in with the Snapcaster Mage. Our opponent will probably trade it off. Okay. Because the longer this game goes, I think the more likely we are to win. So our opponent will have to waste another removal spell on the Angel, and then we'll probably Terminus, maybe. We'll see. Okay, our opponent will fuck seize away our Terminus. Oh, wow. Okay, so our opponent's getting real frisky with these fairy rogues. Uh, we are going to, before anything, activate this. Um, I think we want a second Serum Visions. Uh, we are not going to be guaranteed to cast that otherwise. Okay. Uh, we're going to bottom and bottom. And we'll attack with the angel. It looks like our opponent's going to probably block. Nope, take it. Okay. So our opponent is definitely trying to leverage these uh, fairy rogues as best as they can. So this is going to drop them to five here. If they attack with both of them, we're going to path a rogue. Okay. So let's see. This is interesting. Our opponent's going to attack us with two rogues probably. If they do, we will path the third rogue. And then if our opponent doesn't have a removal spell, we'll be able to win this game the end of the turn we'll go ahead and path this rogue see if they have a removal spell nope okay great so we were able to kill have basically kill our opponent with that bitter blossom which was very nice all right i don't think that we want to overboard against bitter blossom our opponent took out or sorry took our disenchant really high but I think it might have been partially because they had so many Bitter Blossoms there. They just died to their own Bitter Blossom, which we're very happy about. Okay. Any changes? I don't think so. I think we're good with this. Oh, boy. Do we keep this hand? It's basically a mulligan to six already, but the Terminus is probably still going to be relevant in this matchup. These baubles could literally be anything. I'm, I'm going to keep this hand. Our opponent mulliganed, so we can hopefully leverage just our card advantage over our opponent. Alright, we drew a Monastery Mentor. Does that change what we want to do at all with these baubles? And I don't think it does. Or I think it does, actually. I think we want to just leverage these baubles uh, later on. Okay, yeah, our opponent kept a one-lander. This is great. Okay. So we'll go ahead and play this Misty Rainforest, and we'll go get a duel. And um, then we'll play the Monastery Mentor and use two baubles. Okay, so our opponent did draw a land. It's not a green land, though, which is good. All right, what are they doing? They're going to take take our Terminus. That's fine. So we're just going to go ahead and um, Monastery Mentor, Bobble, Bobble. Awesome. Okay. So now we have some Counter Magic up for our um, Monastery Mentor. So our opponent has to have a removal spell here, or we will be able to negate the next two removal spells. Uh, once again, we don't want to use these baubles until our opponent passes their turn because they can Thought Seize us. Okay, our opponent does have a Terminate, which is not great, but at least we got two monks out of it. We'll go ahead and 
Our opponent's going to draw a Dark Confidant. We're going to draw a Mishra's Bobble. Oh, a Terminus. No. Okay, we don't want to draw the... Or we don't want to use the Terminus. Um... I guess we'll play the Field of Ruin. We can negate our opponent's play here. Interesting. Dark Confidant. Alright, I think uh, because we know our opponent only has two basics, we're going to go after their uh, red source here and they'll get their own one of their basics and then we will be able to cut them off of their second basic or sorry they don't have another basic so this is basically a free path i suppose we could have gotten in two more damage if we would have um waited till our turn but if we would have drawn a spell i wanted to be able to cast it like this opt all right so i think we want to fetch first with this misty rainforest because we don't want to screw up our scries Go ahead and opt here. Bottom of land. Uh, I'm drew land anyway. That's unfortunate. All right. All right. Cool. Man, drawing all these lands is not great, though. We need to draw, like, a Snapcaster Mage. Our opponent will spend an abrupt decay on one. That's fine. Okay. Opponent plays a goif. And has another land. All right. All right, game on. Our opponent has three cards in hand. We also have three cards in hand. Man, and we just keep drawing lands, too. Whew. Okay, uh, I think here I like um, not using our Terminus yet. We'll wait one more turn. If our opponent plays another creature, we can get some more value out of this. And I think we just take this Goyf hit. That'll entice our opponent to play more creatures. Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, so this is exactly what we wanted. Uh, because we took that hit, it was... Our opponent didn't think that we were planning on using a Terminus here. Ooh, nice. Okay. Uh, yes, we'd like to reveal Temporal Mastery. Uh, this will let us get in for a little bit more damage. This turn... We'll be able to get our opponent down to 11, it looks like. And then next turn, we'll be able to cast the Terminus with Negate back up. Oh, if our opponent Fatal pushes this Monk, this is absurdly good for us. Wow. All right. Wow. So we, we definitely mind-gamed our opponent there. I'm not sure if uh, we're going to be able to win because of that, but that was a really good sequence for us because we get to take another turn here all right and we drew a jace this is perfect all right cool so we're going to be able to um start accruing some value off of this jace we have negate backup so if our opponent tries to play liliana or something like that we can negate it yep we'll go ahead and negate the maelstrom pulse Drew an opt. I want to use this opt first. I would like to try to draw a real card here. We can set it up with the Serum Visions. The path's a pretty good one. Alright, Snapcaster Mage is a better one, though. So we are going to draw the Snapcaster Mage, discard the path, and then we'll tick up the Jace on nothing, and we'll pass the turn. Okay, Grim Flayer's fine.
I'm fine with uh, trying to get our opponent to overextend on this board again, so we'll just plus the Jace on the Grim Flare past the turn, see if our opponent wants to keep playing to the board. Uh, we have the ability to use this Snapcasters very favorably here. All right, our opponent drew more lands. All right, cool, they're playing another Grim Flare. This is good. That means that we can just use the Jace and uh, Terminus. Um, yeah, just go ahead and Terminus here. Just a very classic two-for-one right there. We have the ability to path the next thing our opponent plays. We'll go ahead and leverage that path right now. We know our opponent doesn't have any more basics, so it doesn't matter when we use it. We just need to draw like a, a good card here. Uh, I think we want to use the first Snapcaster Mage in a Serum Visions because we want to draw a... Um, we want to draw a Mentor, there we go. Okay, so we drew the Mentor, or we will draw the Mentor. Um, I think we're cool with waiting until next turn. That's fine. So we'll just plus the Jace and pass the turn. I'm holding the land in hand in case our opponent plays Liliana. We can just discard that, and then we'll be able to kill the Liliana very quickly after. Okay, cool. All right, and we'll play the Monastery Mentor. And we will play an Serum Visions. We'll cast Serum Visions now. Uh, we'll bottom both of these. Um, go ahead and play that out. And we have the ability to Cryptic Command the next thing our opponent plays, and then we'll be able to win the following turn. Alright, and we have cashed a league with the meme stream. Excellent. Alright. <sighs> Can't believe that we've gotten there so far with this pile of garbage. But we have. So at least we got a free league out of this. I hope you guys are enjoying. Move right into our next match here. Alright, we want the dice roll. Would we like to play first? Uh, we would, but we can't keep that hand. This hand's also garbage. We're gonna go to five. There's just five lands. I think we just keep five lands, bottom, that. I think this is the type of thing where we might just see what our opponent's playing. Um, I'm just gonna play a Misty Rainforest and pass. If we see very quickly that we can't beat what our opponent's... Alright, it's a control mirror. Uh, I guess theoretically we're not just dead. I want to see what second color our opponent's on, so we'll play a Field of Ruin. See if our opponent's blue-white or blue-red. Or Sorry, blue-white-red or blue-red. Okay, so it looks like our opponent's probably just blue-white. Um, it might actually just be worth playing this out at this point, actually. Because our opponent doesn't have um, good answers to Monastery Mentor if they are in the... Um, If they're in just blue-white, other than Detention Sphere, Detention Sphere is not a permanent answer, especially in this match. So our opponent has four more cards than us in hand. Sure, okay, so Detention Sphere on it. That's fine. We will probably concede relatively quickly. Uh, we do want the Jace, and I believe we also want to play the Jace this turn. So we'll opt, take the Jace... Play this. Play the Jace. Alright, and if we can flip this Jace, we might be able to actually get somewhere. Oh, 
Huh. That's real strange. Okay. We play so many more basics than our opponent. Maybe not, actually. We probably play about the same. Okay, so our opponent is just trying to get us off white mana. But that's it's not going to work out super well for them. All right. We'll go ahead and draw a discard. Um, just got to discard the Flooded Strand. That's fine. Play that out. Plus. Use that. Bottom. Bottom. Go ahead and just... Do this now, I guess. We don't want it to get countered. All right, Gideon, Sphinx's Rev, Cryptic. Yeah, all right, we'll just get the Cryptic. That's fine. I don't think we can beat this hand, but that's all right. Sure. All right, we're going to get some value off of this Serum Visions. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go after the... Celestial Colonnade, so we can get a Plains, so we don't screw up our Scries. Then we'll cast that Serum Visions. Bottom that, top that, play a land, and we'll pass the turn. We know our opponent has a... Um, Sphinx's Rev. Gideon Jura. Okay. It's pretty solid. Okay, so we need to attack the Gideon. Alright, that's fine. Attack the Gideon Jura like we have to. All right, our opponent's using Serum Visions. See if we might be able to like kind of get our opponent here. Destroy target tapped creature. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use the Snapcaster Mage and opt. We don't want a second Jace. Alright. Cryptic's not a bad draw. Okay. And we might as well get in at the Gideon of the Trials, I guess.
Alright. Opponent got us with a minus of the Gideon. Okay, our opponent's preventing damage dealt by that planes. Okay. Alright, they're attacking the Jace. I think here what we want to do is we want to... Return that Gideon to the owner's hand and draw a card. Okay. And then we're going to path this Celestial Colony. We should have done this at the beginning of combat step. But that's alright. Alright, this is cool. So this will let us go get a second planes. Serum visions. Terminus is cool. Alright, we will top this, top the mentor. Plus on nothing. Okay. Opponent's turning that Gideon into a 4-4. Uh, four, four. Go ahead and play a uh, Snap Crapster Mage. Target Cryptic Command. We'll block. All right, at the end of the turn, I'm going to return um, the Gideon to his owner's hand and do this. I'm assuming our opponent will counter this, which I'm fine with. Nope. Okay. So our opponent has both Gideons in hand. Go ahead and play Monastery Mentor. Cool. Um, we're just going to go ahead right away and minus on the Serum Visions here. Use those Serum Visions to draw some cards. Let's see if our opponent has a Wrath. They probably do. But this also at least sets up our draws a little bit. Ooh, a Bobble. Interesting. Okay, so I... I think we probably want one more mentor, but not two. We'll go ahead and cast the bauble right now. If our opponent wants to spend their whole turn basically using the Celestial Colony to attack down the Jace, we're cool with that. Alright, our opponent's going to rev here, rev for five, that's fine. Okay, opponent uses a verdict. Sure. Right. 
Go ahead and play the mentor. Go ahead and plus on nothing. Go ahead and play the bobble. Might as well use the bobble here. Uh, that way we can draw a card during our upkeep. So they have an island on top of their library. We get to draw an opt. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, okay. We'll flow to blue. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and thought scour our opponent. And we drew another mentor. Look at that. This time I think we do need to opt now because we need to hit a cryptic command here. Nope. Alright. It's not great. Not great at all. Alright, we hit a Field of Ruin though. That's very good. Okay, so we'll play the Field of Ruin. Go one, two, three. Play that. Chase will minus. We'll target a Serum Visions. will path the monastery mentor okay go ahead and get an island uh, bottom top let's go ahead and play the Jace and that'll be the turn. Our opponent flipped the Azkanta, which is interesting. They probably shouldn't have. Okay. Still need to get rid of the Azkanta. It's a significantly more dangerous land than the Celestial Colonnade is. See what card our opponent takes here. What'd they take? They took a another search for us, Kanta. That's not good. Okay. Us or the Jace. I don't really know. Us. Okay. Alright, let's get and treat the angels here. We will draw and discard with this Jace. Discard that. We will choose to hold on to that Jace. We will plus that Jace. Play a Flood Strand and pass the turn.
All right, we were able to counter that. And I think at this point we can just go ahead and concede. Right, we're not going to win this game. All right, let's go to sideboard. All right, in this matchup, what do we want? We definitely want the Vendillion Clicks. Or the Vendillion Click. We don't want the Terminus. Uh, we want Negates and Dispel. Probably don't want the Thought Scours. And probably trim a couple of paths. Maybe bring in one more Thought Scour. Let's try it like that. All right, let's play first. Uh, this hand's great. All right. This hand gets to play a turn two search for his Kanta. So sign me up. We want to hold on to our basics here as long as possible. If our opponent has um, Spell Snare, then they got us. That's okay. Um, I don't see a situation where the search for his Kanta is going to get any better than it is here turn two. Oh, sweet. And our opponent doesn't have anything here either. Uh, yes, we'll put Opt in our graveyard. Okay, cool. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, Serum Visions and play Jace this turn. Uh, we'll top both of those, actually. Play Jace, pass the turn. If our opponent wants to path it, that's fine. Nope. Alright, and our upkeep, we're going to uh, Jace first. Uh, and we will discard an island. Then we will f put the cryptic in our graveyard and transform the search. And then we'll draw for the turn. Play a land. Uh, we'll plus targeting no one, and we're just getting way ahead of our opponent on board here, which is really cool. Looks like our win condition here is going to be Jace, which is a very real win condition. We just have to let it survive for um, three more turns, or four more turns. The six, so seven, eight, nine. Yes, okay, so three more, t four more turns. Oh man, our opponent found a search for us, Kanta. That's unfortunate. Okay, so we will um, make a rather unconventional play here because we want to prevent our opponent from drawing a land here. So what we are actually going to do here is we are going to Cryptic Command, um, return the Ascanta to our hand, and draw a card. And then this Field of Ruin will not resolve, so our opponent won't get to draw land, or get a land out of it. And then at the end of the turn, we're going to Thought Scour our opponent, because we're planning on actually milling them out. Cool. Alright, so that resolves. Um, go ahead and shock that in. 
get down to search for us, Conta. Plus that. And we'll go ahead and get this Vendillion click down under uh, a counter spell. Take a look at our opponent's hand, get rid of something that can get rid of a Jace. They got a Gideon, they got a Vendillion click of their own. Um, yeah, I think we want to prevent our opponent from getting there with the Gideon. So we will take the Gideon. Alright, they're going to use a Vendillion click. Right, they're targeting us. Interesting. Okay. Uh, put negate in our graveyard. Yeah, it sounds good. Let's put negate in our graveyard. We'd love to transform us, Kanta. Alright, we drew a land for the turn. We'll go ahead and begin by opting. See if that changes what we plan on doing here. Uh, path is probably a pretty good draw, so we'll go ahead and plus on that play a land for the turn. And pass here. Sure, we'll wait for our opponent to scry here, and then we will path their Vendillion click to mess up their scry. So they can either choose to draw land or not. Alright, they top topped. Probably get in with this Vendillion click here. Uh, the main reason why we want to path them here, if they want to use a counter spell on that, we're fine with it. Uh, if they don't, then they uh, will either not be able to search or screw up their scry. Alright, looks like they chose to um, script their scry, which is good for us. Uh, we will take a temporal trespass. That seems pretty good. Um, and we will opt. Put a cryptic command on top. Draw it. Last time we looked at our opponent's hand, uh, they didn't have any counter spells. Uh, but I don't see any reason to try to force through a temporal trespass here. I also don't see any reason to attack with a Vendillion click, because that's not the plan that we're on to win this game. Our opponent plays a Snapcaster Mage, that's fine. Target a Dispel, that's fine also. That means our opponent's going to have to aggressively go after this Vendillion click with a path. And then we will path the Snapcaster Mage. Oh, okay, so they're going with a Jace. That's fine. We'll let the Jace resolve. This is fine also. Uh, they can have Cryptic or Cryptic Mystic Gate. hundred percent block there uh, at the end of the turn take a look at the top of our library here uh, take a temporal trespass excellent alright so we will emblem the jace Sorry, we want to um, play that. Mill our opponent for five.
All right, our opponent's going to counter it unless we pay six. I think we might as well just go ahead and use this cryptic command uh, because we won't actually want to get rid of these temporal trespasses from our hand. Play a land and pass the turn. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and get a planes here, I guess. That's fine. Sure. And then before combat, we'll go ahead and we will path the Celestial Colonnade, and then we will take a couple of turns. Okay, sure. Our opponent dispels that. That's fine. All right. Actually very excited about how we're going to win this game. Uh, we'll discard a Field of Ruin. That's fine. Play an Island. Uh, we'll plus on nothing. Seven. Go ahead and take another turn. Take another turn. I don't know. Are you guys having fun? Because I'm having a lot of fun right now. Um, and then we'll minus on a... Um, Okay, it looks like our opponent's conceding. Excellent, all right, cool. So I had a lot of fun there. We took two extra turns and killed our opponent. So that was real cool. Um, yep, yeah, I think we'll just submit like that. All right, I would like to just state for the record that we're very unfavored this game. Uh, but we're going to give it the old college try regardless. This was a really good hand, actually. Um, if you were wondering in terms of uh, how we could possibly win this matchup, we also do have to play fast. Our opponent's well ahead on clock from us because we do significantly more things than they do. Uh, we want lands, so we'll do that. might have an Ascanta fight here. We'll get down our Ascanta. Our opponent will get down their Ascanta. Okay. Yep, Ascanta fight. Uh, the one cool thing about the way that our deck is set up is that we will be able to flip ours first because we have so many more fetches than our opponent. Opponent put a path in the graveyard. Uh, put Misty in our graveyard. Yeah, we'll put Misty in our graveyard. Yes! Alright, we'd like to reveal Temporal Trespass. See if our opponent wants to waste a spell on this. And they do. I'm not sure... Not really sure if our opponent's... Our opponent's definitely not supposed to counter that. Okay. Well, we were real happy about that. Because that means we get to flip the Ascanta next turn. Sweet. Oh, I wanted to top both of them. Crap. That was a mistake on my part. Yeah, I wanted to top both of them and bin the Vendillion click. Crap. Alright. That's fine. I think the only thing is that upkeep, that means that we're going to have to uh, cast an opt. Oh, our opponent missed a land drop. Oh, this is great. All right, so we definitely want to hit our land drop. So upkeep, we're going to opt, and we want to draw that card. Continue. 
Uh, we have seven cards in our graveyard, so we don't have to put that in the graveyard. And we will transform as Kanta. And then we'll go to draw, and we'll just play that, and we'll pass the turn. This puts us significantly ahead. Our opponent didn't get to use their mana. They're going to bin any non-land. Ah, they hit on a land this time. All right, so they shocked it in, which means that they definitely have Cryptic Command. So we are just going to go ahead and leverage this. And then next turn we can um, force this uh, Jace through a uh, Counterspell, which is what we'll do here. Actually, we can force it through two counter spells. All right, cool. So that resolves. We're actually in very good position here to eventually win this game. The problem is that we're significantly behind on clock. So i got to play faster. Uh, sure. Uh, no. I'm going to use the Dispel here, because that way we can still snap Dispel. Okay, so our opponent's going to Dispel back. Um, the Dispel resolves, and then we're going to um, Snapcaster Dispel. Alright, our opponent gets to flip their Azkanta now. Okay, they have a Jace. Jace is really good in this matchup. Alright, that's fine. Looks like we're going to be able to positively leverage this Jace, though, which is good. We're going to start off by using it. Get that Misty out of here. Play that. Plus on this which then means that we can get in at the Jace with our Jace, or with our Snapcaster Mage. All right, cool. And then we're going to Field of Ruin there as Kanta. Get a Plains. And pass the turn with double negate up or a nice contact activation. Oh, I think I forgot. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. All right, we'll give them uh, the two lands over the field of ruin. All right, they took the two lands. Interesting. All right, let's go ahead and get something off this as Kanta. We got a bobble, which isn't great. Any order. We definitely want to shuffle that. Alright, target that. Get this bobble going. Bobble our opponent. Our opponent draws. A path to exile. Okay, that's good to know. We're going to get in at the Jace here. If our opponent wants to activate the Celestial Colonnade and block it, that's fine. Oh, okay, they're going to block with the Snapcaster Mage, which is even better, I'd say. Uh, we are going to go for the blowout here. Negate that Cryptic Command. Alright, our opponent dispels the negate. Okay, that resolves. Uh, then we are going to go for the um, negate here. 
All right, cool. So then we block there. Um, we'll stop our opponent during their draw step. All right, and we will Vendillion click. Our opponent has path in their hand, so they're going to probably use the path here on the Vendillion click, which we're cool with. Yep. Would love to use the ability. Let's get an island. Take a look at their hand. Disdainful stroke, and that we're fine with leaving our opponent with both of those. Our opponent's going to rev up a colonnade here. Oh, no. Um, give them cryptic command over the others. So they have disdainful stroke, cryptic command, um, and a land. Yep, they got a colonnade. They're going after the Jace. All right. Uh, we're just going to target nothing here um, with the plan of Vendillion Click uh, targeting our opponent here to take the Cryptic Command, and then we will Temporal Trespass... Um, with the Jace, and hopefully kill our opponent next turn. That's kind of the hope. Take the Cryptic Command, they have a Disdainful Stroke in hand. Oh, that's a good draw for our opponent. Okay, so we know that they have um, Disdainful Stroke in hand, so that means that we want to um, play around that by using the gate here. Cool. Alright, so unless our opponent hit negate here, I think we win. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we win here. Unless our opponent hit, like, exactly in the gate. Alright, so we're gonna... We're just gonna go ahead and use the Temporal Trespass here. This is a little bit of a risky line, but... I like risky lines. Oh, we know that they have the Disdainful Stroke in hand. Never mind. Okay, so this this was probably a little bit of a punt by me. That's fine. So we, use, we made our opponent use their Disdainful Stroke there. That means that our Cryptic Commands will be able to... Um, to connect. They need to hit like verdict here. If they hit verdict here, we're actually in a lot of trouble. Okay, they're going to rev for five, which will put them up to nine. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, Field of Ruin's a good draw for us. Um, target nothing. And then there's no reason for us to really blink here. Our opponent needs to do something here. I guess if they hit Verdict, this can go very poorly for us. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, return Snapcaster Mage to our hand and draw a card. Okay. And the verdict resolves. Okay, Serum Visions is fine. All 
All right, and the search for his cunt is fine also. Um, I think we just have to force it here, right? Um, target negate. Man, and our opponent had a path for it. That's not good. Okay. All right, we got a game on here again. I only have a minute, and we don't have any man lands in our deck, so this might be a little rough. Okay. Thought Scour. We will target our opponent. Uh, we drew a Bobble. Bobble our opponent. Uh, we'll take the Serum Visions, put those in any order. Use the Serum Visions. Draw the Snapcaster Mage. Play the land and pass the turn. Alright, so our opponent has to answer the Snapcaster Mage. Okay, we're fine with that. Okay. Well, this is very good for us so far. So, our opponent has four mana up. So, what we're going to do is flash and Snapcaster Mage. Uh, we will target Opt. Uh, we're going to fetch with the Flooded Strand. Get a Plains. Op now. Bottom a Serum Visions. Okay. You got a bobble. Alright. So now what we need to do is three, four. Um, return the Gideon draw card. Okay. And we got there. Wow. All right. That was nuts, guys. We had 14 seconds left, and I think we played to our one out there. I think I punted the game a little bit with the um, casting the giant 7 CMC card. For some reason, I was thinking it was 2 CMC, the take an extra turn card, into the known um, ceremonious reject or um, disdainful stroke. But we were able to get there. So the meme stream uh, lived to be 4 and 1. Um it was kind of amazing. We played a bunch of really fun uh, miracle cards. We didn't really get to blow out our opponent. We more or less showed the uh, the power of the take an extra turn more than we did uh, anything else. But that was a lot of fun, guys. I really enjoyed that. I'm going to try to cut down the video maybe a little bit. Uh, I hope this fulfilled your need for some more miracles. Um, I had a lot of fun playing it. hope you guys had a lot of fun watching. And I'll see you next time with some more modern action. Thanks for watching, guys.